honey bunnies, today has been such an intense day for me in a positive way because today I received two readings that I booked, one from Eric Silvermoon, that was a video, a pre-recorded video reading, and another from Katrina at Cosmic Blue and that was an email reading. They were both about different things that are going on in my life at the moment and both are very intense situations and I knew that I needed that objective outside help and I knew that I'd, I needed card slingers, fellow card slingers with integrity and honour and wisdom to help me um, and you know receiving readings like this and processing the information and journaling and really thinking about what the cards have to tell me um, just makes me, it just compounds for me and highlights for me why I do what I do and I know because I've been told by quite a few clients that readings that I have given, readings that I have delivered have brought some clients to tears um, just with the intensity of, of the illumination that has been brought to their situation or the fact that they feel seen in their situation and they feel like they have a direction and they feel less alone and sometimes that can bring tears and it's not a bad thing. It's beautiful and and reading somebody's interpretation of the cards in accordance with my situation when they have the sensitivity to bring to it and the empathy to bring to it and it just shines a light on what you're trying to do and on the path so that you can see it it's very valuable it's very very profound it is a privilege, it's a privilege to do what I do and sometimes when I am lost and I need, you know, when I need that sense of direction and when I need somebody to hold space for me and when I need the cards to speak to me on a really deep level, it is just as much of a privilege to have people that I can go to, to receive readings and to receive that honest appraisal um, through the lens of those archetypes that are so valuable and that mean so much to me and it's just incredible how much material and how much of an amazing starting point you are given and you are left with after you, you know, pay a card slinger whose heart is in the right place and who has a true connection to the material, a true connection to the tool. It's amazing how much you're left with and it's amazing how worthwhile that investment is and it's just really brought home to me how joyful I am to be doing what I'm doing and how joyful I am to have people to do it for me when I can't do it for myself and to accept graciously the help that is on offer in the universe and to open up to that and to know that that puts me back in touch with myself again and it's me being an ally to myself, it's me being a friend to myself through tough times, through difficult scenarios, through really challenging obstacles, it's me loving myself and being on my own team, on my own side. I fully, fully recommend Eric Silvermoon's readings. I also fully recommend Katrina. Oh my God, guys, you've both absolutely broken my heart and put it back together again better than it was before. It's just amazing. I'm just astounded. I'm astounded at the fact that there's so much wisdom to be drawn from the tool and there are so many people using the tool with such integrity and it's so valuable to me and it's so important that we allow each other to hold the torch sometimes it's so important and just let yourself have that help and let somebody hold that space for you and I feel so happy so so happy that I can have a tarot reading that means so much to me that I can have a tarot reading from someone else um, and I'm sure so many professional readers feel the same. It's so great to experience what you so hope that you can help others to experience through your own work and I so always want to give quality and I always want to give a, a really sincere interpretation and I want to be with the client for that time whether it's Skype, whether it's email whether it's a pre-recorded video, I want that to give them 100% of my attention and I want them to feel that I'm walking with them on the path for that time 
and I feel like that today, I feel seen today, I feel held today and it was worth every fucking penny and Eric, Katrina, both of you are incredible, you are artists, you are healers, you are true lighthouses and thank you and it's a weird way to open up a video scrapbook but I just felt like I felt like I wanted to go a bit candid camera and show show you guys just how incredible this has been and honestly I journaled all the way through the video reading that I had from Eric and I was writing so many things down and I was just putting so many pieces of the puzzle together and thinking so much and, and there were so many synchronicities and so many things just came into view um, and sharpened you know it was like the aperture just clicked into place and everything sharpened and I just received my email reading from Katrina which fucking floored me and I know that I'm going to be printing that out tomorrow and I'm going to be working on that and journaling with that too and that is just me giving myself the most incredible gift and I wouldn't be able to do that if there weren't people out there with these incredible connections to the cards thank you thank you thank you um, thank you for, for taking the torch and for illuminating the path for a while for me when in these situations um, and at these particular times I could not do it objectively for myself and I needed that space held and it's just amazing and it's a privilege to do it for a living and it's a privilege to be able to have people do it for me as well. Um, it's just magic. God, I love, I fucking love it. Don't you love it? God, I love it. Look what I've got to open with my morning tea. Oh my God, I just came back from my morning walk and I've got presents. How exciting. I think I know what one of them is. I know, because I know one of somebody's sending me a deck that I lost in Floodgate. So I'm wondering if that, I don't know if one, I don't know if that's one of these, <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. Oh, this is lovely. Let's see what's inside. Oh, yeah, it's Manga Tarot. Oh, it's so nice to have it back in my hands again. Oh, I lost it in Floodgate, and it was so hard. Thank you, darling. I won't say your name in case you don't want your name to be said, but thank you, and thank you for this little note on the back. That means so, so much to me. I can't believe I've finally got another copy of Manga Tarot and I didn't have to buy it. It's so crap spending money on decks you've already lost, but decks you, like, lost in unforeseen circumstances. It just feels really shite because you save up to, like, buy the decks and you're so happy when you've bought them and you kind of, like, consciously put them into your collection and then yeah to lose them is just so crappy and to have to rebuy them is so crappy so this is just a, such a lovely surprise and I actually have a couple of readings to do for clients very shortly and I cannot believe that this is actually an option for uh, for client readings again I'm just overjoyed thank you so much I'm not very graceful with opening packages I let my inner child come out when I open packages. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Oh my God, it's the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. Oh, that's just lovely. That's so lovely. Oh my gosh. As if I own this again. As if I own this again. Are you serious? There doesn't seem to be a note with this. Um which is a massive shame because I would love to be able to I mean I won't I don't I won't mention names of people that send me things just in case they don't want to be mentioned um because I, I know a couple of people that are really um private about their names and prefer to be known online by like usernames or whatever and I've, I've known a couple of people that say that it's quite jarring when somebody says their real name online so I try not to do it um but yeah um I don't know who sent this to me, but oh my god, thank you, thank you so, so, so much, that's just amazing, I, oh, I can't believe that I, it's here, and it's back in my collection, and honestly, Floodgate 2015 was such a shitty time, it wasn't just the fact that I came home from my first proper holiday abroad in years, um, you know, my back was bad for a long time before I went to Berlin on this trip. There was no way that I would have gotten on a plane with my back the way that it was. Money was not the way it would need to have been for me to have gone abroad. Um, you know, I was I was really in a slump when it came to like travel and stuff. So being able to go to Berlin 
um, and just make that happen and to have my back be in a condition and my bank balance be in a condition where that was possible it was like supposed to be one of the most amazing highs ever and it was but to come home and find half of the fucking ceiling on the floor and damp everywhere and everything smelling and decks destroyed on top of that that really was the icing on the fucking cake um floodgate is really difficult to think about and that's one of the reasons that i have not repurchased because i know probably some people are thinking well you have bought a couple of decks kellyanne since floodgate why didn't you use the money to rebuy bohemian gothic or rebuy mangataro and it's like yeah i totally get that but it's very difficult to think about that time for a plethora of different reasons that i won't go into there's some much more personal reasons why just the living situation that i was in at the time the way that i was being treated by the people that i lived with the fact that it had all just gone a little bit sour in general um floodgate on top of that really was like it really did take the biscuit um and so rebuying has been just a little bit like difficult and slow going because because of that because i don't want to think about it because i just want to let it go so for people to be so generous and to send me decks that they no longer use, um, that they don't need, that they know that I lost is just unreal. It really does make it feel like it makes it it makes the floodgate situation and all of the crap that surrounded it and just the way that I was treated by the landlady afterwards and the way that everything started to dissolve after that point. It makes it a lot less sore and a lot less... I mean, I'm going through a healing process in relation to that time in my life. A very deep healing process right now. But this does definitely go some way towards helping me to reframe what happened. And I really do appreciate that. That does mean a lot. Thank you so much to both of you. That's just epic. I can't wait to look through Manga Tarot and I can't wait to look through Bohemian Gothic again. I've really missed them, you know. Manga Tarot I've had for ages and I was just coming back to it after quite a long hiatus with it. I was just starting to use it for quite a few client readings again and there were client readings that were coming up that were just so appropriate for Manga Tarot. So I was gutted about that. And then also on top of that, um, Bohemian Gothic, I was studying with that. I was journaling with it. Um, so yeah, that was a really big loss because that was actually right on the top of my tarot bag. And my tarot bag was like a doctor's bag, okay? So it was quite a sturdy bag. Um, my mum found it for me at a vintage fair and it was a really sturdy, proper, like med old medical doctor's type bag. Um, but with the inside like lined with uh, with leather. So it was really a sturdy bag and at first when I found out that a part of the roof had come down onto the bag and that the bag was in the direct line of the water from above, I wasn't that worried, I must admit. I mean, obviously I wanted to get in there and check that fucking bag, don't get me wrong, I wasn't being nonchalant about it, but I was kind of pretty sure that unless the water was, in unless it was an incredible gush of water, which it turned out it really was and was probably, it was probably leaking for quite a long time on top of the bag afterwards, I thought everything would be cool. Um, I didn't expect to see quite so much damage as I did see. I was kind of shocked. Um, so yeah, you know, I just, uh, it was it was kind of shocking. Bohemian Gothic was right on the top because it was the very last deck that I played with, the very last deck that I studied with before I left for Berlin. So I really feel like what's come out of this thing is actually so much bigger than the thing itself. Like the, everything that happened as a result of Floodgate and the domino effect that Floodgate kind of, brought into being and just the sign that it was from the fucking universe oh my god it was such a sign I wish I could explain the ins and outs to you but I'm quite a private person and I wouldn't I wouldn't talk about those kinds of things especially not in the context of the channel um but yeah I the, the universe was just basically speaking to me through the element of water and has been speaking to me through the element of water ever since I might add it's kind of a bit crazy um <laughs> but yeah I really feel like um I did a rune I did a a rune reading, a, a kind of communion with my matron deity on the first new moon that I was in this flat. Um, I did a, a real full on communion with her where she actually spoke to me through the language of the runes, which she often does when I ask her to. Um, she shows up in really a very literal, like take tea with your best friend kind of way. It's crazy. And she told me that, um, I was talking to her about what's been going on and what's really breaking my heart and what's really difficult to accept and what's difficult to heal from. And she just kept telling me over and over again, this is just part of a much, 
a big broader thing and wh whatever you think is negative now whatever you're looking at that's negative it's about evolution baby you're shedding a fucking skin and you're gonna come back brighter it's gonna be fabulous like you need this in order to grow into what you are going to become it was almost like she was saying you're down there okay you can't see the horizon right now but i'm up here on top of your shoulders and let me tell you it's fucking wonderful don't even worry about this shit this shit is small fry compared to where you're going baby you just focus face forward and fucking focus and i will be your periscope i will show you what's coming and when you see when you see your life through my eyes then you'll realize that this is all part of a much bigger thing and i feel like part of what floodgate has been is me understanding at the deepest possible level the connection that i have with the audience that i've built and the connection that i have with other spiritual people across the planet and especially people that read tarot and oracle cards um, I feel like Floodgate was somewhat at least partially designed for me to be able to see that and feel that and really hone the gratitude that I have for that and that's been such an important part of my development and it's been an important part of reframing what the channel means to me and why I do what I do and reframing what I have to learn and what the people that watch this channel have to teach me. Oh my god, that is absolutely gorgeous. It's a tarot bag, but it's so me. <laughs> oh my god. It's from Tarot Sulis, Sulis Creations. This is absolutely gorgeous. That is so weird because I was actually going to purchase a tarot bag for Marielle because I can't keep I can't keep them in that massive box. I'm going to start journaling and playing with them quite soon and um, that box is just very cumbersome it's beautiful as a presentation box and I really dig it but number one I don't want it lying around all the time while I'm just journaling and number two um, the cards are quite difficult to get out I know somebody mentioned in the comments section underneath my unboxing Marielle tarot video that they put a ribbon around theirs which of course makes total sense and I don't have very much common sense I'm going to admit I'm, I'm the kind of person that I'm great at a fucking dinner party do you know what I mean? I know a little bit about a lot of things and I can I can hold a conversation. But when it comes to common sense, I will literally put a bookshelf up against a sloped wall and I won't even think afterwards, like, oh shit, it's, uh, I can't put any books on. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I'm terrible in the common sense department. So when somebody said like, I just put a ribbon around. I was like, yeah, that's the kind of shit I would not think of. Well done, you. Well done. You were at the front of the line when common sense was handed out and I was somewhere near the back, you know? Oh, it's got beads on it. Oh, that is incredibly well made. Oh, look at the little beads on it. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I love that. It really gives the, the string some weight. This is an unbelievable gift. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Um, I love the fact that the the biggest one of the three skull faces has a flower crown because i love wearing my flower crown you know when the summer rolls around i'm going to be getting that fucking flower crown out again <laughs> and i've purchased several more since uh, <laughs> since the two summers ago that i bought it or three summers ago that i bought it yeah i love me a flower crown so that's very very apt so i've got a home for marielle now i don't have to I don't have to jive with the big cumbersome box, but of course I will be keeping the big cumbersome box. It's beautiful, but it's good to have something a little bit more accessible for my for my period of study. Thank you so, so much. Beautiful, beautiful people. You know who you are. You have made my Monday morning fabulous. I have to make a really crappy call today to my landlady about, <laughs> about some people that don't know how to recycle properly and the bin men are not picking up our recycling because these people just don't... Uh, it's just a really crappy like consensus reality call that I need to make and this has really really brightened me up and given me the incentive to be like you know I feel good I'm gonna do this call rather than <laughs> I came back from my walk and I was like oh god I've got to do this call and I don't want to do it but yeah now I feel now I feel zesty and peppy and ready to go so thank you thank you thank you Oh my god, they've arrived! <laughs> Today is the day that I get to see the finished product, the book that I co-authored along with three other amazing tarot readers. Oh! <laughs> 78 cards tarot deck. Here it is, signed by Lana Zellner herself. <gasps> oh my god, I forgot about the t-shirt I ordered! Yes! The strength card! Oh 
Oh yeah, I completely forgot I ordered that. How awesome. This is the illustration from the strength card and I've got it on a t-shirt and it's been delivered to me on March the 8th is when this is being filmed, which is International Women's Day. What a fucking cool affirmation of International Women's Day to get the strength card on a fucking t-shirt. Hell yes, I am woman, hear me roar. But this is, this is the most important thing. This is, this is really what it's all about. This is why I'm filming right now. This is the moment that I get to open up and look at the book that my writing is in. And uh, I wanted for such a long time to be invited to write the definitions for a tarot deck or for part of a tarot deck or to collaborate with a creator to um, to give the words to their illustrations and to find the meaning in in the messages from from the drawings and it's just like it's something that I wanted to do for a long time but I always kind of kept it at the back of my head and I knew that it wasn't something that I wanted to push for but then Lana approached me about the 78 cards project which had been funded by Kickstarter and she said that she wanted a different reader to do every suit and yeah, she asked me to be involved and I think initially I was going to be doing pentacles and then she switched it around and said she wanted me to do the majors and I was just up for whatever. I was really excited seeing her illustrations and seeing what she was doing um, just kind of meant uh, a lot to me because I saw that she was working in this very kind of American, like kind of ne uh, neo-traditional um, American tattoo style and that she was a tattoo artist and when I saw the illustrations I was like this deck is amazing, it's going to be so amazing. So I was just really excited to be asked to be a part of it and then just getting to know Lana throughout the process and seeing her dedication and seeing how it was all coming together. It was a magical, magical journey and a magical experience for me and now I have the book in my hands. I'm just going to rip it open. I'm so, so excited. I'm not being very cool about this at all and I actually don't give a fuck. I can't wait to read the contributions from the other authors, from my co-authors on this, um, because I did have access to each of the files as we were going along and writing them out. Like I could access um, the wands and, and the pentacles and so on, but I didn't really have a great deal of time to look through and see what everybody else was producing. So I'm really excited actually also to have a look um, yeah, have a look through at everybody else's, but it's so, so exciting to see my words in print with the gorgeous illustrations as well from the Major Arcana. What an honour. This is absolutely awesome. Introduction. The introduction I wrote last. For me, the Major Arcana's relationship to the element of spirit is amongst the most important aspects of its character as a suit. Spirit contains and integrates the four elements, transcending them but also acting as their essence and meeting point. An effective Major Arcana suit should be a wonderful expression of the other four suits in the deck, whilst also acting as their archetypal guiding force. Lana has achieved this without question. It is therefore an epic privilege to be able to provide words for the awesome picture she has created. Through being invited to take part in the 78 Cards project, I had the incredible opportunity to watch an artist's vision gradually unfold and see each card emerge into its finished form. With every new illustration that Lana released throughout the project, I became gorgeously ensnared. The world that she has created is unmistakable, its texture and accent is solid and distinctive. For me, this deck is already a classic. The marriage of the American traditional tattoo style and the dramatic stained glass effects is nowhere more enchanting than in the Major Arcana. From the dark occult richness of the magician and temperance to the delicate, sweetly feminine figures of the fool and the star, the major arcana truly speaks to me. I know, I now hope that my words will speak to you, conveying my own perspective on each of the majors while still offering effective guidance. Your journey with the major arcana will always yield more fruit and present more avenues to explore. Through offering you my take on each card, I feel as though I'm along for the ride with you. Let's do this. Thank you so much, Lana, for letting me be a part of this. This is unreal and it feels so surreal and it's just it's just so exciting i can't i can't believe it i'm thrilled the world the inner work you have undertaken has led you to this crucial time in your personal development. Everything you have experienced has enhanced your perspective. Everything you have survived has only served to make you stronger. As you look back over the past stretching out behind you, honour every step of your journey. It has been the making of you. But you must now take what the past has taught you and turn to face the future. You have arrived at the place where the end and the beginning meet. You have done all that you can do in the current situation, location, relationship. And it's now time to either approach it in an entirely new way or take a bow and move on to new ground. 
In order to grow, you cannot be confined. You are strong and capable enough to do what must be done. So don't doubt yourself as you reach the turning point. Things are just about to get seriously magical. It's gorgeous the way the illustrations are so big as well. And I've got one of these bad boys to give away with a deck. How exciting is that? I couldn't be happier today. This is this is amazing. This is such a good treat. I was just about to go out for my walk actually, and I'm so glad that I didn't. I'm so glad that I uh, I waited around because, yeah, I've got to get my hands on this finally. Fifty two pounds custom charge I had to pay, but it was worth every fucking penny to get my hands on this. Hey there, beautiful people. It's International Women's Day, which is a very important day in my calendar. And I have invited you to my altar space tonight to be a part of my very special little ceremony or part of it that I'm doing today in honour of International Women's Day. Tonight I have been doing some drinking here at my altar with it all lit up like a Christmas tree. I have been drinking to the memories of my fallen female freedom fighters. I have been drinking to Goddess Energy. I have been drinking to Matzimlia, Athena, the Virgin Mother, Bast. Santa Morte, Kali and Hell and so many other goddesses that have made such a massive impact on me and it's just been such an amazing time for me to just kind of settle into goddess energy and come back to the core of me and it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to do at my altar space and I'm so privileged to be able to have this time to do it. I've been reading some of the poems from this amazing book that I've had for years that was edited by Aliki Barnstone and it's Voices of Light, Spiritual and Visionary Poems by Women Around the World from Ancient Sumeria to Now. I love this book. This is an amazing book. If you don't own it, I do recommend it. I definitely think that it's uh, it's one for you to own, especially if you're very close to the goddess energy and you really revere the divine feminine in your practice. For me, connecting to goddess energy and learning about different goddesses throughout different eras and civilizations is just as much political and cultural and deeply, potently personal to me as it is spiritual and to do with the way I witch, you know? So for me, learning about goddess energy and the divine feminine and bringing my feminism into my spirituality is becoming an ever more important part of my personal journey. I'm going to read you a poem now from Voices of Light by Rashida Madani and it's called Here I Am Once More. Here I am once more before the sea, smashing whole doors against the rocks, mingling in the same bitter rolling motion, sand and pearls, in the burning metallic waves, the jasmine of my childhood and the shriek owl of hell. Here I am once more before the sea, bent over under the annual booty of rancour of fatigue and of cocks slaughtered throats cut to no avail for the well-being of a turban which for a long time now has been no more than a heap of dust, smirking under a slab while in the shade of a fig tree women and candles burn to do magic with the eye, bad luck and the raven of despair. For an amulet did I too swap my gold tooth, and the henna on my hands and unclasp my eyes did I too look at the moon and drink bowels of the liquid verb still and black. I also kept staring at the boats and the storks which were leaving, but we women all waited in vain, in tears, for our fathers, loved ones, sons and brothers. But the city opens wide the jaws of its prisons, swallows them with its tea and then fans itself. But the city pulls its knives, whittles us a body without limbs, a face without a voice. But the city bears its heart, as we do our walls, but the city. I hurt even down to my shadow, cast upon the other sidewalk where my latest poems are strewn, in little crystals of opaque salts like icy tears. My head falls down on my chest, like a mortar shell, seen from up close, my heart is a lake. As I'm having this time by my altar, this sacred time where I really connect with goddess energy and I read these poems and I just drink to my sisters and I drink to the power of the divine feminine and I think about all that that means to me. I'm actually watching our lizard, Vela, on her nightly rounds. 
she's just um she's just been given some locusts today and she's actually out hunting them as soon as i switch her light off at night and switch her heat pad on she is hunting away looking for hoppers feeding and it's actually kind of making it more potent for me and more meaningful to me to see her feeding like that it's so so cool this is a poem by Xu Ding and that's spelled S-H-U and then the surname D-I-N-G and it's called Two or Three Incidents Recollected. An overturned cup of wine, a stone path sailing in moonlight, where the blue grass is flattened, an azalea flower abandoned. The eucalyptus wood swirls, stars above team into a kaleidoscope. On a rusty anchor, eyes mirror the dizzy sky. Holding up a book to shade the candle, and with a finger in between the lips, I sit in an eggshell quiet, having a semi-transparent dream. This poem is by Liliana Ursu. And Ursu is U-R-S-U. -S the Moon. Proud breast in the chill nucleus of the night. Illusion through which I make confession to autumn. No one knows you better than this poplar, this vacant plot of earth, this hyacinth, this telephone. You are an orange tree draped in snow, a mask abandoned in the sky, cotton candy hawked at the fair of the human condition, a wheelchair for an angel, or maybe an immense balloon. The earth, invisibly attached, is your gondola car, weighing you down. O oh moon, O oh bored mystery. If you're wondering why I'm burning these candles, this candle is a representation of the Divine Feminine as Goddess and in the form of Goddess. Um, and that includes all goddesses throughout every era and civilization. And these candles I am burning for comfort women. I'm burning for the plight of comfort women and for the difficulties that comfort women have faced in experiencing a sense of justice and social consciousness for what they have been through. I also burn these candles for all women who have experienced rapes and beatings and subjugation during times of war. I burn them for any women whose towns were ransacked by invading armies and who as a result had their children torn from them, had their children killed in front of them, were raped, were beaten. I burn these candles as a sincere representation of my recognition of the plight of women during times of war, of the experiences that women have during times of war, and of how those experiences are then minimised, rationalised, brushed under the fucking rug, ignored, downplayed, silenced. I burn these candles in the name of justice, and I burn these candles in memoriam. I burn these candles for all women who have been subjugated during times of war, who have been sold into sexual slavery, who have been forced into arranged marriages against their will, who have been raped, who have been forced to be comfort women in camps. I burn these candles for women who now seek apology and seek compensation and seek a sense of the repatriation of the lives that they feel that they so wanted to have. And I burn these candles in memoriam for the lives that those women feel were lost to them. If you don't know anything about what comfort women are um, or what that term means, please do go and look it up and do some research and learn about the plight of comfort women and about the justice that they seek for themselves and their fellow sufferers. Please do learn about it, please do research and look into it and learn about the plight of comfort women and read their stories, hold space for their stories, hold their stories close to your heart and understand that this really did happen to them and that they are now seeking justice and they are seeking space to be held and they are seeking compensation and they are seeking recognition and they are seeking sincere apology. Today the very first thing that I did when I woke up was to come to my altar and to think about the sacrifices that women have made for me through the ages and through the years and to think about women who have fought for parity and specifically also to think about comfort women and women who have experienced horrendous things during times of war.
So, a few people asked me how we made our vegan roast for Christmas. Mm. So, now you're going to basically talk them through it, aren't you? Right, well, depending on what you want to having your roast and uh, you know, what, what your preference is, um, there's several types you can have. What I've got from the green grocers over here, mm -hmm. I've got some leeks, mm -hmm. got some savoy, some savoy cabbage there, it's locally grown I think. Leeks, savoy it. cabbage, gorgeous. Got some broccoli oh. as well, mm -hmm. uh, put some carrots in there, oh. parsnip. Yeah, that's a turnip um, mate, isn't that's it? That's a fucking turnip oh, right I. there. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a whole root vegetable selection situation right here, but you know, I would recommend that you can if you want to do entirely greens, you can get kale, broccoli, also get some, um, always have cabbage on the go as well still. Mm -hmm. Cabbage is good, it's always good. First off though, what I always do is uh, just line the um, baking dish slightly with a little bit of oil, not too much because largely to get the best flavours I always find is that you want to have a little bit of wa water in your stock as well, mm -hmm. and the stock I use is this right here. Oh, let's have a little look. No vegetable oh. stock pots, mate. Gold oh, <laughs> well, candid either, camera. Either like one or two of them is good. But first off, I normally like to do no the vegetables. garlic first. I've got some Spanish garlic here. Mm. And instead of chopping it up and making a load of fucking mess, all we do is chop both of the ends off each side. Mm. Get your palm. You use your palm just to crush it. To crush Well, what all you're doing there is you keep it in the. Um, Keep it in its little skin. Little skin there as well because then it doesn't dry out too much. Okay. And if you just crush it with your palm slightly. Doesn't that release... hurt though? I would get a knife and press the knife. If you don't want to fuck your hands up, yeah. just get your knife and like just bash it. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Whack it in. I'm there. a weakling. <laughs> so, and that's why really I like to put the oil in the bottom as well because yeah. then all the veg that's on the bottom is not going to stick to the pan mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's going to. No, give like, a little bit of flavour to it and whatnot. Already there. I've got some, uh, like, I mean, they're like mini little onions. I guess you could say, like, shallots. Mm -hmm. Shallots, garlic, done. It's Gordon Ramsay, so... But, um, yeah, Is I that was... what he says? Is that his little... That was one of his things, I think. Shallots, garlic, done. Oh, but... he's such a prick, though. Oh, he's a fucking wanker, that one. He's big as well, everywhere, like Hell's Kitchen. It's like, bruv, you're a tit. No one likes you, fucking go home. <laughs> <laughs> he's so aggressive and just... he's like there's fucking chicken raw mate it's not even that it's just the fact that he li i've literally seen him slap a ma is it was it a maitre d no a, a waiter i don't know he oh, slapped he, he somebody is. oh he's a knob he's a fucking dickhead he slapped one of his employees i was like are you actually joking me yeah, try and you... slap me i'd love you to have a go at slapping me all man's done with that is just like your shallots just peel them slightly, whack them in the bottom. I think they're probably the best ones to do first originally. Also... So you've just taken both ends off there. Yeah, taken both ends off and with the garlic to get like the skin mm. off or not, bang. You do, you bang it with your hand again, do, do you? That. Just cut around, off so. both ends and smack it with your yeah, hand yeah. to release the flavours. Easy. So just like Easy now. Oh, blimey. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> it's a bit violent, love. Oh, shit. It's making my eyes sting. Yeah, I'm, I find as I've, when I was younger, when I used to cut onions, it would be a little bit, few sort of tears. But yeah. now it's like my whole face aches, my jaw locks, I can't <sighs> bear it. Russ. Oh no, you hardly ever get bad eyes from cutting onions either. I won't film your oniony face. Oh, give us a glass of wine. You're not allowed a glass of wine. What? I've just done three readings. Yeah, you're a fucking knob. <gasps> oh. I'm keeping that in. Good. <laughs> You're such a slag, make me a drink. You can put that in. I reckon you should. Oh, lovely. Mmm, you so much, darling. This is really good wine as well. Lime if you're tree. in the UK, yeah. you get lime tree. It's very fresh, isn't it? Mm. Cheers, guys. Chin chin. Fucking nice one, mate. That's the love, yeah? Mm. Okay, now I've fucked with the onions and they're, they're not going to be brilliant. Would you fuck with these leggings though? Yeah, mate. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah bruv. Yeah, man. I'll see you. Look man. at that sock leggings combo, bruv. Mm. I mean, that is a bloody good leak, that. It's a fat leak. That is an incredible leak. 
right there. The local greengrocer with all his delicious local produce. Yeah, the he local... really does select it well, doesn't he? We like to mix it up, don't we? Yeah, we, we like we, to mix it up a little bit. We do. We like do support lo the local people. Yeah. But it, at the same time, sometimes you know. Oh, it's just price make wise. You profiteering with some people, mate. You've some really sometimes, careful, yeah. But it is nice to support local people, local right. produce, all the rest of it. But a bit of Aldi as well at the same time. They do you a big bag of rocket for like a quid, and it's pepper. Yeah, as fuck and it's just yeah, delicious it's nice. okay so i've got some uh some broccoli here mm -mm. um normally what i do is like depending on how many people you're cooking for obviously it's just me and kale here right now um i've got like a small little uh, tree of broccoli there um i like to just like trim the ends off slightly so you've mm -hmm. got little bits like that yeah. um depending on what size and bit you've got you can put them in whole, I mean I've only got a wee little uh, tray thing there, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I just like to cut them in half. Mm. If man's cuts them in half, like that, that's beautiful as it is, you don't need one. Oh, can do I eat that. a bit of that? Yeah, you, oh, can. you can have that little one there. Raw broccoli. Mm. Eat raw broccoli, people. Mm. It's good for the soul. No, mm. sure, right, actually. Oh, well. mm. um, yeah, so just trim them off slightly. I mean, I know that they are beautiful, the little end bits there. Some. But I just think for like neatness and also for saving space in the tin, yeah, if you've definitely. only got a wee one like that, it's best to situation. like trim it off so you've got every little extra spare bit and just eat them as you go as What's well. What's that? I just clean this fucking. S oh, it's a piece of onion skin. That okay. is a piece of onion skin. I just, I just fucking cleaned that earlier. Cheeky. Whack some of these little green bits in. Yeah. Got a lot of greens in here. And also bear in mind, like the things like the onions, they are properly going to cook down as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need to worry about the space. You can cram yeah. loads of veg into here. That's it's the thing. So I've, easy. To I cram really veg think in. that you can underestimate, even after years oh, of cooking. Yeah. I do all the time. I underestimate how much things cook down. Oh, always. Yeah. Veg always reduces. You've got to think. There's so much water in all the things like this yeah. as well. Particularly like green stuff leaks. Yeah. Onions especially, they'll shrink. Uh huh. You're limited to what you can do, but you're not. Yeah. No, you've got, there's got to be a limit to how much veg, but the limit is never as, as small as you think. <laughs> I think that's the point. Okay, carrots. That's a very gorgeous looking carrot there. Good carrot. Trim the end off. Yep. I don't peel me carrots. Yeah. I always think that there's so much taste in the skin. Someone told me an old wife's tale about like all the goodness and nutrients in the skin i think that's probably a lot is it an old wives tale though comment below is it an old wives is tale that a lot of the nutrients tale? is in the skin is of a carrot because i used to always peel my carrots used to get a little peeler and do the carrots until i got with you and that was four score and 20 no it was four years ago well yeah yeah and I ever since know. then I, I haven't peeled a single fucking carrot i, I wash them and just eat them like that yeah. with hummus eat, and i don't peel the carrots like anymore you never peel the skin i think mm. there's a lot of taste in there and some guy once told me he said oh yeah all the nutrients in the carrots and i think that's a fucking bollocks in the it's skin like, how do you know that if if someone on here is watching and they've got some but kind of degree in botany or whatever, please come in. Oh, and potato, tell me you that. don't need a degree in botany. You can just be a nutritionist. Um, but isn't it true that, like, like, there's shit loads of goodness in the skin of potato? Potato skin? Well, I don't know, man. Or is I'm that wrong? wrong. I, don't, I don't know. We don't. I don't know. We're just, so, vegan. We're just yeah. vegans, all right? We're high carb, low fat, raw till fucking four. <laughs> the occasional man. cheeky couple of fake cheese spread and crumpets, yeah. but sue us, okay? We're only yeah. human. So what I do is I just like chop them down. So with that, that's a massive carrot right there. I'm not going to whack the entire one in. Chop them into little bits and have yeah. them halved to like half moons. Yeah. Waxing gibbon, waxing gibbous. Waxing gibbon. <laughs> <laughs> you always like to call it that, don't you? Waxing, waxing gibbon. gibbon me. There's a waxing gibbon in the sky, mate. <laughs> He's waxing lyrical. <laughs> oh, I love my own ones. They're always the best, aren't they, darling? Oh, what you got there? Parsnip? Man's got parsnip beer, fam. Is that actually a particularly big parsnip? It it's huge. a little bit big. Now, traditionally, I don't know how people like to do their parsnips. My nan liked to 
cook parsnips right, like roast them separately in a different one with the roast potatoes on a Sunday. Oh, And she lovely. used to cut them into long bits, mm -hmm. and they were proper golden. Like she used to fucking mm. roast the shit out of them, and they'd be taste well naughty. Mm, but delicious. all I'm gonna do is <laughs> <with this bit, laughs> well, proper double fucking, <laughs> fucking naughty. Double, double fucking double naughty. naughty. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. They're gorgeous when they're roasted to perfection. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. Oh my god. So I've got. That bit of parsnip right there. Uh -huh. You see it again. I've scrub. I probably washed it beforehand in case. Like, don't think I'm being dirty or anything. Yeah, no, I he's pre-washing. Pre-washing all pre my readings, every, didn't you? Yeah, I pre-washed everything. You want rustic? Yeah. If you're having roasted veg, then you want to feel like you're in the like, countryside. You oh, know what I mean? absolutely. You're walking to some kind of tavern. Oh, totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I you feel know. you all the yeah, way, you fam. Me, fam. I feel but, you, fam. So yeah, they come to long bits. Either chop them in half, depending on how much space man's got. Uh -huh. Lovely, lovely. Put it all on the top like this and you can see everything starting to take shape a little mm, bit. Oh, I'm so excited, look how gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, very, very cool. I might just cut up some savoy mm. cabbage in here. Yeah, you love the cabbage, don't yeah, you baby? Yeah, always love savoy cabbage. Um, there's like very different types of cabbage. You can get Chinese cabbage, it looks really fucking banging as well. There was some locally mm. grown cabbage there. Um, like, because where we live in Kent, there's a great deal of cabbage fields mm. around here. What have you been watching? I've been watching Narc. Ray Liotta doing mm. a uh, sort of like narcotics cop thing in Detroit and that. Oh, it's a series. Is no, it no, 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 it's actual film. Oh. It's an actual film. It's actual I film. have seen it. It's the, I have seen it earlier have seen when it. I said I feel like I've seen this. Oh, you seen Yeah, when is it? Yeah, 2002. It. It's quite an old film. I love Ray. I love Ray Liotta. He's a fucking, he's a banging dude. Yeah, he's Ray's right. my jam. Right, so you slice right. them all into fingers. So you sliced it there. Now, just... for the sake of ease as well, if I've sliced it and you've got the same situation as here, you haven't got that much space. Yeah. You sliced it long ways. Cut straight down the middle, still gorgeous. So, mm, mm, sprinkle mm. that nonsense on top. Boom, see that walking lovely, mate. All right, well, this all seems quite simple so far. What's Very next, simple. mate? Right, so the next bit you're oh. going to want to really create a stock situation. Now, this is going to create, I think, most of you like your gravy and that. S some people uh, make their own stocks. Well, you've made your own stock before, haven't you? Yeah. But for the sake of argument, it's been a long old day. Let's go yeah. for the old vegetable stock pot there. So what I did beforehand when I started doing these vegan roasts for me and Kel, I did put this uh, starchy like stock pot, normal stock pot, mm. straight onto the top, mm -hmm. poured water over it and then bang, bung it in the oven. And then most of the flavouring just stayed onto the top. Right. So what I was thinking of doing this time is getting kettle, mm. boiling it for a piece. Oh, I. And uh, where did I put that uh, Pyrex jug? Here it is. Oh, what, mate? Yeah. A couple of them in there. I mean, for something that size, you're probably only really going to want one pot. Because what, what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to season it with, uh, I've got some Cornish sea salt here or any like uh, standard sea salt. I always recommend to people having sea salt. All that table stuff has got iodine in. Yeah. Not particularly fucking yeah, good for you. Yeah, the table stuff's not very nice. Nah, and uh, just got some like black standard pepper. What I'm going to pour into with the stock is I've got some Incona. Uh, West Indian mm. hot pepper sauce. Hot. Yeah, this is very, very good. You bought some chilies today, didn't you, Bobby? I'm not going to use them in this instance. No chilies. No. You're going to nah. put them in a chili or a curry? I'm going to put probably put them in the curry. I don't want to go too overboard with the taste. And also, after you've added your stock, which I'll show you in a minute, mm -hmm. I've got some rosemary here. Mm. Got some nice rosemary. Mm, so delish. Morocco. We haven't got any stuffing, have we, this time? No, because I didn't want to overdo it. Because what I was going to. Uh, we don't need stuffing, really. Uh, steam some potatoes as well, you see. Stuffing is an option, though, guys, if you want to have stuffing. Yeah, if you want to um, have If it, you're vegan, like, it. there are some banging vegan stuffings around, and they definitely put the edge on it. Um, I've also got some, like, vegan mayonnaise with chili. Um, which like goes quite nicely if, you, yeah, if you've got nice. to, if you've got potatoes or you've got stuffing, gorgeous to put a little bit of the old vegan mayo with chili. Yeah, lovely jubbly, nice, just to nice. get that little bit of cheekiness going. So yeah, all I'm going to do really for the top of this roast is I'm going to have these uh, sprigs of rosemary mm -hmm. on top. Now it all depends what you want to use. We've got like a little spice rack here of things. 
got some. I don't know if oregano is really going to go well with that. To be honest, I wouldn't use oregano in a uh, in a roast. To be honest, basil, got basil, maybe coriander, maybe some basil, coriander, um, whatever herbs or dried herbs you've got. It's got a bit of mint there. Would you got use mint? mint? Yeah, maybe. If I had mint, put some mint in with stuffing, or if you like to eat some uh, meats, then isn't it uh, lamb and mint? Yeah, Always goes lamb well. and mint. Yeah. Orca's Crisp did uh, a lamb and mint crisps. Did they? A few years ago, my mate George, um, he he was in, incensed by it. He offered him a packet of crisps, and he was like, lamb and mint. <laughs> yeah, it's not very traditional. Lamb and mint. <laughs> true I've seen so many weird crisp flavors in the UK in the last 10 years it's like they're trying to be fucking clever yeah, they've got like clever, full English breakfast flavor English and you eat it and it tastes like a full English breakfast bro does, but why would you do that like what's Sunday wrong? roast flavor and what's it's like how does this taste like a Sunday roast what is wrong with you to even want to do that okay so I'm just Mad making scientists me... making flavors that they should not be they able to shouldn't make. be doing it like the jelly bean the jelly belly fucking company uh, oh this is a popcorn jelly bean popcorn. and you eat it and it tastes exactly like it's essence of popcorn it's like how did you do this that someone did a cheese one there was always that jelly bean uh, which tastes what? Of, um, a cheese jelly bean dutty nonsense that's disgusting anyway so what i've done here is like how much have i poured into there uh, oh blimey if you want the stock to be more rich uh, mm -hmm. with the stock pots you might want to add two personally right there I've got about 500 uh, millilitres um, I don't know how much that's going to be in so you just pour the stock are you pour boiling water over the stock over the stock just stirring, stirring it, it. Yeah. stirring it a wee bit yeah okay right well, I'm going to pay I'm going to okay. allow my support my subscribers who've requested this to pay close attention to how much okay. you actually use, okay? So just pour over. And, and what are what you looking you for it to be, to be steeped or okay. what? Okay, now what you're looking for is that it just comes up to about there. So oh, right. it's just half. below halfway, yeah? Okay. With your rosemary, if you've just like chopped it. Fucking clap it. To There's wait. tons of subscribers that will just be growing their own fucking rosemary. Well, there you believe, go. Just yeah. wake, wake the bastard up by hitting it a wee bit. Wake the bastard up. Wake that bastard up. Yeah. Be like, oi, it's time to go to work, yeah? You was going to the vegan roast, bruv. Wake <laughs> up, yeah? What, the hot, where was the hot pepper sauce supposed to go? Well, I was meant to put a wee bit of that into the old... Um, Can you not put a bit in now and just do a tiny little do. drizzle of it? So yeah, if, I, if anyone's got any of this stuff, you're only going to need a little bit, yeah. That hot sauce right there is scotch bonnet habanero peppers. Is it scotch bonnet in there? That's in the um, oh dear. hot pepper sauce. Oh yeah, scotch dear. bonnet and habanero now is... Whew. Now if you do this properly and also season and salt before you put it into the oven, yeah. you ain't really going to need that much gravy. It depends how much gravy you really want. But okay. because of the juices that all of the seasoning uh, you put in the stock, the rosemary in that, your pepper, and from the hot pepper sauce as well, you're going to get so much juice off all of that, which you can then like cover. You can literally just spoon out, and because there's not that much oil in there, you, you're relying on the stock to cook everything in. Totally. So you don't need to be like cooking up loads of uh, like bisto wassets and. I won't show you now, really. I'm not cooking roast potatoes this time, but I've just got like these standard um, like salad potatoes. I'm going to put them in the steamer, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm probably going to um, just you're going to add them, them afterwards. Yeah, I'm just going to put them on the side. I'm probably going to put a little bit of dressing on them, maybe. Mm, uh, delicious. But what I normally like to do sometimes is actually steam them, put them into a bowl, add some pesto. In our case, it'd be vegan pesto. With a little bit of uh, like hers, maybe some oregano or whatever, um, slight bit of pepper, shake them about on the side, put the veg next to it, done. Sweet as a nut. Beautiful. Also, mm -hmm. before you put your bits in, uh, you want to cover it with foil, yeah? Co um, what, cover this with foil? You want to cover that. Oh, with, right, okay. Yeah, now you want to cover it with foil. Now, I normally cook it. Have you been about, drinking my winey slag? No. <gasps> I must have gone through that quickly. Yeah. You want to cover this 
for the first 40, well, for the first half hour. Yeah. I normally put this in around 200 degrees. I don't know what that is on gas marks, so you might need to check for those of you on Stone Age situations. Oh, um, gas is better than electricity, I know babe. It's be, I know it's better. I'm I'd rather cook on gas. I'm telling you that now. I'm just taking a piss. So we've just got like a standard fan oven, so 200. Normally just put it over the Pack top. It over the top. And I cook it like that for half an hour. Half an hour. On what the, heat again? The, no, I put it on 200 degrees half hour. 200 then degrees. Then after half an hour, I take off the foil. And so then, because it keeps all the juice, and then the last 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you have the foil off, and then it gets everything nice and crispy on top. Right, okay. That normally works out So quite 200 degrees for half an hour with mm -hmm. the foil on. And then take And the, then you take it out, take off, the foil off. Put it back in for 15 minutes. In for 15, at the same out. temperature. At the same temperature, yeah. That's what you need to do. And why do you do that? Uh, well, when I was doing it originally, it's just because it, uh, if you put it onto the top shelf on the um, oven. Mm -hmm. Top shelf. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Top shop. <laughs> Don't, because loads of my subscribers do know Mighty Boosh, and it's going to descend into a Boosh fest, mate. Trust. Oh, I put it on the top shelf, uh, and I flood him. And I flood him out. Top shop. Top shop. I just put it on there because it just crisps up the veg nicely. Did you just say you drank some of the stock? Wow. Oh no, don't do that. No, you're always shopping. My, Danny is always shopping for the next best hot sauce. He's looking for that perfect je ne sais quoi of the hot sauce situations. He's tried all kinds of different hot sauce. He goes back to different hot sauces and then he's got those hot sauces that he fucking hates that he doesn't think are hot enough that he bitches uh, about. Oh, sauce is fucking pussy sauce, man. <laughs> pussy clat yeah, sauce. Yeah. Pussy clat sauce. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not hot enough. You need you need heat. If you've got any kind of hot this hot sauce here, you need a little bit. Personally, man's needs lots. I don't understand. But. I'm really confused. Like I don't mind if you want to put hot sauce on everything, it's fine. But it's just like I don't understand like what kind I mean your taste buds must be so stressed. You surely you can't taste the flavours. I've heard people, including you, say that truly, truly hot sauce deepens the flavours, but I don't see how. No, it depends how much you use. Like, there, there is a lot of credence to that statement because, yeah, hot sauce does deepen the flavours, but hot sauce just fucking goes with anything. No. But then after, no, shut up. <laughs> hey, man's got no hot sauce in his bag. Hot sauce is in the cupboard, though I should start carrying you it You want to carry it in your bag I now, do. don't you? I think I will, because, like, yeah. You, I'll be. You've I, no idea what you've started. The, Use lot in the south have got good taste buds. You've got it right. Much. You've got it right. Yeah. At any moment yeah. you need to spruce up a meal, it's done. It's done. Perfect. Still. Yeah. They're going to steam for about 20 minutes if you steam uh, them for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So I'll get them out and I'll probably put them in a pan. So you talk, so when your when your vegan roast has twenty minutes left to go, start the steamer situation. Turn your turn your knob, Ua. Ua, cheeky. To about twenty, well, fair, I'd say twenty five minutes. Yeah. Because I cut them in half, I'd say twenty five. If they're whole, probably thirty. Um, but I prefer to steam than boil. Boil just takes all the like, nutrients out of uh, veg. Yeah, steaming is great for veg, if you, especially if you're vegan and you rely on all that goodness. If you're if you're raw most of the day and then you have a hot meal at night, make sure you steam everything rather steam than boil it. it. Whoa! Now. Hey, it's ready. Oh my god, it smells See, so. See now, it's a wee bit crispy on top here, but mm, then you've got all the nice delicious. crispiness, mate. Okay, oh so my god, that's so smoky. The potatoes mm. after they were steamed, all I did you is steamed put, the potatoes. Yeah, put a bit of French dressing, put them into this pan. Yeah. Don't even need to heat well, it up. After you steam them, after you steamed pop them in them, the pan. French dressing, French salt, French dressing, pepper, salt, pepper. Oh my god, and, I'm so um, excited. Bit of uh, oregano or something Ooh. like that, and then just shake it around a wee bit. Shake like, it in the pan. Oh, so you gorgeous. like, they will get fluffy and whatnot. And if they're fluffy like that, then they're all blessed, and they do taste really, really oh, good. Oh, that is blessed. Um, no. Also, no. you might find that you might spoon on some of the garlic cloves onto there. Mm. You might want to oh. take them out, but they really do add a certain nerve. Je ne sais quoi. Gorgeous. Thanks, babe, for the je ne sais quoi. I, I appreciate your je ne sais quoi, bruv. And 
mayo or whatever you want. Oh, into. gorgeous mayo. Get that, get that chili mayo out, would you, babe, for me? Oh, oh babe, babe walking, thanks. Loom bounds oh, egg free chili mayo, mate. <laughs> loom bounds, mate. Just walking <laughs> on a game of coins. Scummy darn, mate. <laughs>